Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we usually see these more speculative assets really start to pump and get attention when the crowd is uh, in a relatively good mood. And we can't forget the fact that we've been in basically an eight month bull cycle. Yes, technically, the all time high for Bitcoin was three months ago, but we're also only like two to three percent below that all time high right now, yeah. even though it's been kind of a roller coaster and people have been stressed and anxious. The, the reality is we're right there at the cusp of breaking that new all-time high and that allows, you know, profit redistribution to keep flowing into these other speculative assets. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about some crypto metrics today with Brian from Santiment. Brian, great to have you on. Great to be here, Tony. Fun time in crypto right now. Yeah, Brian, uh, it's wild, man. <laughs> There's so much going on with meme coins, meme stocks, uh, Bitcoin ETF flows, Ethereum spot ETFs getting approved. So we want to look at the data, um, you know, aside from all the emotions and all the euphoric uh, sentiment and so forth. But let's look at the data. Um, maybe we can start off with meme coins because we've been seeing celebrity meme coins. Uh, we got the GameStop situation going on, which is kind of feeding over into memes, right? It, it's both the kind of the same energy, right? Retail piling in, getting excited and so forth. Exactly. Yeah. You kind of give or take when it comes to meme coins. It, it you know, throughout 2024, especially, it's been a lot more uh, partying than sorrow for the meme coin traders out there. But uh, as of late, we've seen a bit of a shift with that, even though there's plenty of talk about it. It's a little more for negative reasons right now, depending on which meme coin you're talking about. GameStop, of course, more than doubled uh, back in May and then kind of had a second wave earlier this week. We're talking about the stock, of course, not the token, but uh, both are kind of relevant. They, they trade with each other. Um, and now I think people are a little bit concerned. Uh, there's some FUD being spread about GameStop due to uh, the stock going down mm -hmm. more than 20% at the time of this recording. The, the trading day is not over, so who knows? Um, and of course, the, the token itself is, is seeing a few bumps at the moment. So let me share my screen and we can look at a few things here. Perfect. So this is the overall amount of social mentions toward GME. Uh, we can actually, you know what, make it GME or GameStop. So you can use words like or or and if you want to combine different words together uh, for you Excel wizards or uh, Python wizards out there. You're totally familiar with that kind of stuff. But uh, what this does is just combine the two. Any mentions of GameStop or the abbreviation GME, they're all being calculated in here among all platforms. You can even break it down by Telegram mentions, Reddit mentions, Twitter, slash X, WorkCan, and Bitcoin Talk. You can see most of it, which you would expect, is on Reddit, because that's kind of where the whole GameStop craze started back in 2021. Right. So when you combine all five of those platforms together, you get a pretty clear picture that we're on a big spike once again in terms of discussion rate of GameStop. We had that first big run when um, Roaring Kitty came came back after his three month or three year hibernation, uh, and of course GameStop uh, went on a huge run. In fact, let me turn on. I can change the price to show GameStop's price, like so. Mm -hmm. So you can see pretty clearly how the social dominance—that's what the red is. This is the percentage of discussions related to GameStop versus all of the discussions in crypto. It it just exploded with discussion right here in mid-May. I'm not sure, by the way, what happened on April 1st. Maybe it was a April Fool's joke, but many of you may know better than me. Uh, wouldn't be surprising considering it's the meme crowd. But regardless, when, when you see these spikes, the reason this is, this is relevant, not just interesting, is because you see FOMO come in when price goes up. So you see this pump, then you see the social dominance go nuts toward GameStop. And then if you wait a few hours, usually there's some time to react to the FOMOing going on. You suddenly see the top form and a huge crash come. And it's, 
you know, with many assets, it's not quite this extreme. But when you're talking about a purely speculative type of project like GameStop, uh, it's it's going to see a lot of volatility. And that's that's essentially what happened here. Huge retrace. People stopped talking about GameStop for a few weeks. And then, oh, what do you know? June kicks off with another big pump. And the FOMO comes right back. Right after it does, prices pull back. People start to, you know, dismiss GameStop once again down here. And then that dismissal forms the bottom. And then we get another huge surge. FOMO comes in and another retrace. It's incredibly predictable when you follow this kind of chart. And, uh, you know, it's not a perfect science, but it's it's a pretty helpful aid when it comes to finding those tops and bottoms. Oh, yeah. And this is why I love this data from Santiment because... Uh, versus, you know, me picking arbitrary signals on social media, or whatever, you know, and, and my limited sample size, I can use big data like this and from multiple platforms to get an idea of what's happening. If I was, you know, looking to trade this or uh, see what impact it may have on the larger stock market or even crypto. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I think most people in crypto who've been around long enough have realized to a certain extent, all of these coins are going up and down based on speculation. Some might even argue it's almost all speculation. Uh, at Santiment, we basically, you know, say that that's half the equation and then the other equation is whales. You know, how much are they accumulating at any time? Hmm. So it's not just, you know, how much does the crowd believe or not believe in GameStop? It's for those people holding just a ton of GME coins, are they pushing up the price? You know, is Roaring Kitty himself one of those whales? And is he, you know, secretly accumulating, publicly accumulating? Is he really just diamond fisting like everyone thinks he is? If we knew his address, it would be easy. But regardless, we can see what whales are doing. And that can give a nice picture on top of all the FOMO and FUD that's going on. Mm. Now, we're also seeing this type of activity um, with celebrity meme coins and um, certain meme coins in general. Um, I don't know if you saw it, like Iggy Azalea, you had the Bowden and the Tremp <laughs> meme coins. Yeah. And I feel like these are going to go even more crazy as we get closer to the elections. Definitely. I don't know if I remember the, the ticker for the Iggy Azalea one, but if you find it or know it, let me know and I'll add it to the Mother. Mother? <laughs> yes. Of course it is. What, what a time we live in, man. <laughs> I, I know. So this is this is a combined look at all three of those kind of hot meme coins right now. Mm. Tremp actually got most of its attention back in mid-May. Mm. Bowden has kind of actually tailed off, even though, you know, we might have seen some stuff uh, recently. Uh, it might have been due to a little bit of a price pump. It isn't really being talked about any more frequently than it has over the past three months. In fact, I'd argue it's it's actually declining in discussion. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Mother definitely is a good candidate right now. I'm not going to say in terms of a price pump coming up. <laughs> that's up to you. But in terms of crowd attention, uh, it, it's certainly gaining a lot of steam right now at this time of this recording. So. Uh, that could be worth looking into if you're just a fan of volatility. Mm. This is certainly going to be a social volume, uh, an indicator that would indicate you're going to see more wild swings for Mother uh, in particular. Yeah, I Iggy Azalea has been pump. Uh, well, I shouldn't say pump, but has been uh, posting a lot of uh, content and salacious uh, content on on Twitter. <laughs> so it's been getting a lot of traction. And then I think the spike for Trump was when he came out and supported crypto um, and made some very bullish statements about it. And Biden hasn't really been saying or doing much. So his meme coin has been going down. It's so funny, man. Um, it, while it's a joke, it, it's reflective of some of the things that are happening in real life. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we usually see these more speculative assets really start to pump and get attention when the crowd is uh in a relatively good mood and we can't forget the fact that we've been in basically an eight month bull cycle yes technically the all-time high for bitcoin was three months ago mm -hmm. but we're also only like two to three percent below that all-time high right now yeah. even though it's been kind of a roller coaster and people have been stressed and anxious 
the, the reality is we're right there at the cusp of breaking that new all time high. And that allows, you know, profit redistribution to keep flowing into these other speculative assets. Mm. Now, let's take a look at the meme coins at large. Um, I know you guys have a great social graph showing um, overall meme coins and what's been happening. Uh, maybe you can share some takeaways from this. Totally. Yeah. So this is our, our list of the top 50 meme coins by market cap. You've got Dogecoin here, which has been dead even over the past week. Shiba. Let's even expand it to the past 30 days, have a little more fun with this. So a lot of the big pumpers uh, include MAGA here. So this is Trump, just mm -hmm. as you mentioned, up 78%. Pepe can't ignore the fact it's up 70%. Loki right there plus 73. And then you've got Mog coin, which has almost 3x over the past month. And then Turbo has been by far, by far the best uh, performing meme coin. I remember just looking last month and it was down here toward the very bottom of this top 50. And look at this. It's now at what is this? Five, six, seven, eight. It's the 10th largest meme coin by market cap all of a sudden. So that's what you know, a, a 9x or 8x pump can do for your asset. Wow. So confirmed the top uh, uh, is the social volume changes. And what we were just looking at is price changes, right? Exactly. So this little bar chart is just the overall price changes. Uh, it, almost everything's in green. Uh, but you see a few like pork is actually falling off a cliff. Uh, Viru chain, a few of them out there, but most are up significantly. Um, and then we've got the social volume and especially for a sector like meme coins, which is so speculative, these matter a lot, you know, mm. Dogecoin not being talked about while Pepe is being talked about more than twice as often as it was compared to last month. That means you're going to be seeing a lot higher chance of Pepe either continuing to pump or continuing to fall off a cliff. If you wanted to look more specifically, you know, open up Pepe on the social trends page, like I just did for the, you know, mother and Trump and Bowden, and you'll see like hour by hour spikes that can really lead you. Uh, so Pepe, of course, tons of discussion. Turbo, 169% more than last month. I would, I'm actually shocked it's not like 500% higher considering mm. how much it's pumped. Get the idea. These ones in green here are the ones that are really going to give you a a cheat sheet as to the ones where the crowd is looking to next. Hmm. Um, it's incredible <laughs> what's happening. So let's talk about Bitcoin because we are starting to see that ETF inflows are on the rise again, you know, BlackRock, uh, Fidelity, and so forth. And it seems like Bitcoin is trying to move upwards to you know hit a new all-time high it's it's pulling back a bit right now but look that's that's in the the daily which you know that, that can swing anyway on a daily but what are you seeing from a macro standpoint with the data that, that you guys have yeah i'll just go over a few of our best metrics for bitcoin because whether you're into memes or ai or whatever sector you're trading in you should still be caring about the health of bitcoin because if it collapses at some point especially near this all-time high, your your coins are going to go down mm -hmm. um, and vice versa. If it, if it breaks this new all-time high and is off to the races toward 80K, uh, that's where your, your other altcoins are going to be very relevant. So looking at Bitcoin's key whales, uh, it, it's funny, we, we usually use this chart because the 10 to 10,000 BTC wallets, which hold about two-thirds of the supply, they're a really relevant uh, tier that really kind of shows which direction Bitcoin might be going next. Price follows what these holders do quite accurately. However, we had the trustee of the Mount Gox uh, situation consolidate a ton of wallets back a couple weeks ago. And that really skewed this tier. It kind of gives a false representation of how much they're holding. So what I'm looking at now is this line, just any wallet that's 10 or above, that includes the wallets that they consolidated into from Mt. Gox. And generally, as you'd expect, when wallets holding 10 or more Bitcoin, or right now about $700,000 or more, 
when they're going up, so does the price. When they're going down, price tends to get a little more choppy and unpredictable and worrisome. So since uh, right around the end of 2023, it's been a big party of going up and up and up. And these bars here represent the daily price closes. And obviously, they, they benefited from that. Right around here on May 27th or so, it kind of started to change direction. And it's been sliding down just slightly, not to a significant deg significant degree, but enough where there's a little bit of pause for worry right now. Um, we can zoom this out to like the last four years. And you can see the last time we really saw a drop from this bright green line was starting in February of 2022 and going all the way to right around the end of the year. And as you remember, 2022 is not a fun year for crypto. Mm -hmm. Interest rates go nuts um, and lots of reasons after that 2021 all-time high to be a little bit worried about a retrace. So the whales just said, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to start taking a lot of profit here. And during that time, Bitcoin really plummeted as well. So after that, you know, we had, of course, the FTX crash near the end as well, and that caused chaos. But they started to accumulate again right at the beginning of, beginning of 2023. And during that, since that accumulation time, prices forexed for Bitcoin, which is massive. Uh, and it's just been more and more and more accumulation right up until about two weeks ago. So I'm not going to say we're about to just start to see them dump, but there are some caution signs showing that they're they're not accumulating in the aggressive fashion they have for the past year and a half. Gotcha. Could be like uh, they're waiting to see what the market does, if it's going to correct further down um, before maybe taking additional positions. Um, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just wait for those big swings and then they react. Some people think mm -hmm. the, the whales are the only ones who cause big swings. Sometimes it's the crowd themselves that kind of start a domino effect. And then the whales decide whether to stop that domino effect or, you know, continue that pattern. Mm. Interesting. The other thing I wanted to show here was the uh, MVRV. So this is just the overall average of returns based on any address that's been active in the past 30 days here in orange or 365 days here in teal. Generally, prices are most likely to go up when both of these lines are below zero. And right now, uh, they're both a bit above zero. The 30 day is just a tad above. So traders in the past 30 days are up 1% on average. Traders in the past 365 days are still up about 30%. Hmm. That long-term trend has been kind of the long-term worry for us ever since the all-time high when they were up like almost 70% on average. Um, you won't necessarily see these lines always fall back below and that's the clear signal to buy. Think of it kind of like as a risk probability. The higher above zero these two lines are, the more concern and caution you should have typically based just solely on the math. Um, and right now it's kind of like at a, you know, if, if, one is is bearish and 10 is super bullish it's showing it like a three and a half right now so it's not the best picture i wish i could give you better news but this is just based on mvrv of course and this is a zero sum game at the end of the day even though we sometimes forget that so average trader returns are still high and historically we need to see a little bit of a cool down period or at least see prices kind of flatten out for a little longer before you see a resuming of, you know, the party. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And uh, given what took place up to the having with these ETF buying and Bitcoin way ahead of schedule, you know, no one was expecting 74,000 hitting an all-time high before the having, which never happened in the history. I think a, a pretty extended cool down period is probably needed. And like you're saying, the data is kind of showing that, kind of telling that story. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes there might be like a, a quick jump over the all time high and then the cool down starts. You know, there's no guarantee we don't we don't hit that milestone first. So be prepared for anything. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now let's talk about Ethereum because uh, we got the approval of or the partial approval of the Ethereum spot ETFs. I'm curious what the whales are doing. What what, what uh, signals are you seeing there? Yeah, definitely. So this is a, a perfect time to show one of our brand new metrics. We we now can see how many coins the whales are holding both overall and on non-exchanges. So this is showing that especially since mid-March after prices began to retrace, they the non-exchange holders have just erupted with accumulation. And mm -hmm. yeah, the overall amount reflects that too in yellow. So again, so much depends on Bitcoin's health and its ability to stay afloat. But Ethereum in particular looks really good right now, according to these new metrics we have. Um, they're not dumping at all they're they're really just sitting and waiting and uh the price by the way this is showing the price versus bitcoin so this is actually the ratio versus bitcoin and i like to look at that more than just the overall price if you're in an altcoin pay attention to how it's going versus bitcoin instead of just the overall price because that's where you get a really good correlation with what the whales are doing um and you can see what they what happened last time they had this big aggressive accumulation here in you know 2021 when we hit that first all time high and it got above like 67k or something. So you can see too like <clears throat> just about a week or two before that true top for Ethereum, that's when they started taking profit and moving down. Mm. So this is a, a pretty cool reflection of of how powerful the whales can be. Wow. Um, and I'm curious because what we've seen is that when Bitcoin is cooling down, sometimes um, after a pump, its dominance starts to go down and then some alts will start to move up as though the liquidity is flowing to other assets from right. Bitcoin to other assets. So could it be flowing to ETH now, um, given that Bitcoin's in a cool down phase? Yeah, that's, that's a really fair uh, way to look at it because there's profit redistribution out of Ethereum, just like there is for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And when one or the other pump, uh, you know, the, the associated assets to them are usually the biggest beneficiaries. So like any asset that's on the ERC 20 blockchain, they're going to benefit from Ethereum doing well. And obviously the ETF news coming out about a month ago, um, it wasn't just Ethereum that pumped. It was, initially ETH and then like the following week, all of like the ERC-20 meme coins did well, AI coins that, you know, render stuff like that, they did really well. Um, so I, I think there could definitely be a path uh, for a lot of ERC-20 altcoins to, to thrive, assuming the Ethereum whales continue to show the pattern that they do and obviously Bitcoin stays propped up. Mm. So speaking of AI tokens, uh, can we take a look at that and what's been happening on that side of things? I know, like you were mentioning, Render, FET and so forth have been going crazy for the most part for this year, right? Uh, just ripping. Um, so I'm curious how they're, they're uh, where they're at right now. Definitely. So this is just the last week of price returns. Some of the highlights for AI and big data tokens are ROSE, RSS3, SEER, which by the way is a very high developed coin for those who value that, mm. uh, Graphlink, NuNet, uh, most of these I've I've barely covered because they're so far down the line, but maybe you've heard of them, Flintex, DX Chain, Dairy Protocol. Um, in terms of Render being the second largest over the past or in AI and big data in general, they're only up about 1% over the past week. Um, and BitTensor has done a little bit better. What was the other one you mentioned? Oh, uh, Fetch, F-A-T. Fetch, that's right. So they're the sixth largest, and they've actually been slumping a bit, down 8.5%. I'm curious if I open up their, um, their whales and we take a quick look at why that might be struggling right now. Mm. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go to FET on our charts mm. page. Mm -hmm. Type in whale in search. And I'll do whales not on exchanges and whales 
overall. <clears throat> so interestingly, let's back it up to like the past year. There was some something massive happened here in early May that caused whales to hold way, way more. They went from literally like a billion in FET to 2.14 billion almost overnight. Uh, since that time, it did drop down a little bit, but this shows that fetch should be doing just fine eventually, even though it's been on a uh, a bit of a plummet. I, I like the way that the whales look here in terms of accumulating, even though it's all at once in one big block. I don't know if that's related to some founders' addresses or exchanges or something, mm. but the red is not exchanges, so... I would assume that uh, there are some very, very uh, deep pockets that believe in fetch right now, and that would be a good sign to me that this so, plummet will. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, Brian. So just to confirm the red and the yellow. So the red is exchanges, and the and the yellow is whales. Red is non exchanges, and then oh. yellow is just overall. Yeah. Ah, okay. So wow. So that's an accumulation signal. It looks like it. Yeah. I mean, according to wow. this, they they more than doubled their holdings sometime between May 2nd and 3rd here. Wow. Yeah. Um, there is something coming up where three tokens are going to be merged. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, FET, Singularity, Net, um, and I forgot the other one. Was it Ocean? Ocean, yes. They're going to be merged yeah. together. So I wonder if some, you know, something's happening there. And and I'm assuming That's a great point. All, all that liquidity is going to be merged together um we'll see what happens with the price and and all that yeah look at, i mean that makes perfect sense actually there's there's definitely a bunch of dumping of ocean maybe due to the merge so mm -hmm. there there might be something a little deceptive with this particular metric but either way it's still fascinating to see just these wild shifts and holdings between coins well uh could you pull up singularity net yeah yeah that's let's see that's, that's the one that yeah and uh let's see what's same thing same thing hmm. so i presume maybe there's something going on where singularity and ocean are kind of merging into fetch yeah yeah so that's far the largest yeah, of the yeah and they're gonna relaunch as i forgot i think it's called the uh i forgot the name of it it's some artificial intelligence something something <laughs> alliance or something like that <laughs> yeah i don't remember either but you're on the right track for sure um fascinating stuff man um brian anything else you want to highlight before we wrap it up i don't think so i think we covered uh covered some good stuff here i mean uh, overall the sentiment is kind of mixed mm -hmm. i see days where people are super euphoric and and calling for an all-time high and other days where everyone's talking about taking profit and stuff so uh, you know, pay a lot of attention to that. You could even go to social trends and do a simple comparison of like just buy versus sell. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of get an idea of how much people are calling for one way or another at any given time. Wow. Like in the last week. Um, yeah, there's actually a ton of buy calls right now. And mm -hmm. I think it's due to the fact that we've we've just plummeted in the last few hours. So people are trying to buy the dip. Sure. And Ironically, when a lot of people are calling to buy the dip, it's a sign that this isn't quite the dip to buy yet. You want to wait until the pe people are afraid to buy the dip, and that's that's the time. Right. Yeah, that, that absolutely makes sense. So I'm wondering if something is around the corner, some big correction, which we may start, we're starting to see the, the you know, the, or the, the start of, right? The, it, it's beginning right now, and it's going to go down. Bitcoin's going to test some uh, support levels. All coins will bleed out a bit. Uh, maybe there's a cool down on the stock market because of G GME and so forth. But then we find the bottom. And then, like you said, when, when people are, not, everybody's scared, it goes from greed to fear again. And then we yeah. start moving up. Yeah. You want to wait for the blood in the streets, as uh, Warren Buffett says. For sure. For sure. Brian, great stuff, man. I love this this data. I hope uh, the folks watching are, are uh finding this useful and uh, they can of course go and check it out on sentiment, right? Yeah. Get a free trial. Um, here's our pricing page where you can put in uh, the code thinking crypto, all caps, get a nice, I think 25% off your first month or first year, whatever you buy. 
but you can also just open a trial and uh, see how you like it for a week and decide after that. So uh, always great catching up with you, Tony. Looking forward to the next one. And, uh, you know, cheers to your entire community and hope you all have a good weekend. Yeah, likewise, man. Thank you so much. 